Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about issue number 4 of The Invincible Iron Man, written by Jerry Duggan. But before we dive into the story, I want to ask you a favor. If you enjoy this video, please leave a like and a comment to help the channel grow. Now with that said, this issue opens with a narrated story saying, Once upon a time on a terraformed Mars the gods clashed, referring to Avengers issue number 3, and instead of holding on to the prize and continuing to make it a green world, they just let it die on the vine. What fools they all were, and before I could stake humanity's claim on the world, the mutants stole it. Everything I'd worked my entire life for, snatched away because of the small-mindedness of Tony Stark and his Avengers friends. Defueling the rockets and returning them to storage was the worst day of my life. But today will be one of the best days I ever had. For the person who was telling this story was Philong, the self-proclaimed antidote to the post-human fascism we live under. So with that established, we pick up with this individual doing a speech at the New York Stock Exchange with both Nimrod and Dr. Stasis at his side, as he is now in control of the majority of Stark's enterprises. Now this is a big deal, because ever since the events of Judgment Day, Orcus is now seen more as heroes to humanity than the villains they actually are. But anyway, moving forward, last issue Philong left a message to his old friend, Tony, to meet him at the stock exchange where he is currently publicly celebrating his victory over Tony Stark to his face, which is the wrong thing to do. Because on the very next page, during an interview with the press, a pissed off Tony Stark enters the room and states, only the bravest people try to do a hostile takeover of Stark Enterprises. Because over the years, many people try to take over my company and died, like Obadiah Stane and Justin Hammer. But funny enough, in Justin Hammer's case, Tony wasn't sure if he was still dead, or at least dead to him, and hell, even Tony Stark also died once before. Now this right here didn't really phase Philong, for in his words, Tony Stark wouldn't stand a chance, which was funny, because an onlooker suggested that they should just go outside and fight for the pink sheet of the company, which Tony was fully prepared to do. And to Tony's and the reader's surprise, Philong steps outside the building to face him head on. So as the two men face off, Tony let Philong know that just because the X-Men Fantasy Island was too tough for him to take down doesn't mean it would be easier to switch lanes and take what is his. But in a cryptic manner, Philong let Stark know that the mutants have already been defeated and they couldn't have done it without the mutants' help, but that was a party for another day, which was crazy to me because it's even more foreshadowing for the fall of X to come. But anyway, as Tony Stark began to hover above Philong, he casually throws out a daddy joke about how he at least know his father, which was a bad choice, because Philong let out a giant beam from his mouth, sending Iron Man flying into a parked car. So following that cheap shot, Philong turned to the press and took the opportunity to advertise his state-of-the-art suit, which he is apparently always wearing. Now, this really pissed Stark off, because not only did Philong kill one of Tony's friends to steal his shares in the company, but now he is trying to use Tony himself as a public relations stunt. So upon returning to his feet, Iron Man let out a beam directly at his chest, but once again Philong's suit just took it in with no problem. So with the fight officially on, Tony decided not to hold back at all and went in on Philong, hitting him with every object within reach, because his beams were of no use. As as Tony hammer away at Philong, Philong actually offers Tony a partnership where the two men can fight alongside humanity together and even volunteer to take a fall in their current fight and return the company back to Stark and just operate in the shadows and conduct a cold war. But see, Tony wasn't having it because with a swing of a parking meter, Tony sent Philong flying all over town and before he could hit a moving school bus full of kids, Tony once again redirected him into the iconic Charging Bull statue. So as Philong sat defeated, Iron Man created a giant EMP-type wave that enclosed the entire area so he could deliver his terms to Philong in private. Because Tony tells him that he gets it, he had his heart broken because the mutants stole Mars from him and he wants his pound of flesh. So because of that, he is mad at Tony because he believes that Tony held Mars and just let the mutants have it. But one thing Tony can't allow to happen is for Philong to use his own creations to hurt people including the ones he cares about, because not even Stain and Hammer were foolish enough to do that. And his best advice for Philong is to go to the nearest police station and turn himself in for killing his friend. 
but in one last attempt to get the upper hand, Philong attempted to punch Tony which ended badly, for Stark caught his hand and broke it with little effort. So with the battle won and Philong on his knees, Stark took off leaving Philong screaming out that he finally found his nemesis. Now, finally after the fight, Tony took off to the edge of space to take a minute to breathe and relax, kind of like hitting the reset button as the earth rotate behind him. For that in a way is the fastest way to travel across the world. For on the next page, we see Emma Frost sitting in her private palace drinking something as Armor rushes into the room to inform her that a bogey is coming in hot from space and she has already informed X-Force about what is going on. But to Armor's surprise, Emma tells her to stand down because she was expecting this guest. Because before her stood Iron Man saying, is the enemy of my enemy my friend? So with that said, issue number four of Invincible Iron Man comes to an end. Now, with that said, Philong is now in control of Stark Enterprises with a vendetta against the mutants of Krakoa. So down in the comment section below, let me know your thoughts about this issue and what predictions you could have moving forward. So with that established, I hope you enjoyed this video and please don't forget to leave a like and a comment if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.